Hello everybody, hope you're doing very well and welcome back to another cryptocurrency technical analysis where in today's video I am going to be covering Bitcoin and the drop that we have seen today and going over whether I believe that this is the end or whether there's still moves up to come. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll throw in some altcoins. What shall I cover today? Uh, I will cover Icon because that was a nice trade and I will go through um, Litecoin, why not? I covered Litecoin yesterday so let's do Litecoin, Icon and maybe Cardano at the end. Um, <laughs> that was just made up on the spot by <laughs> you like those picks um so here we go let's start with bitcoin obviously the main star of the show at the moment bitcoin with its over three percent move okay drop down from the very high of the candle from today so the high of the candle down to the low we're looking at about a three point about 3.7 moved okay from total of the move okay from the high to the low 3.7 percent which is substantial we saw some altcoins coming down 10 to 15 percent okay and there the opportunity lies with trading the bounces okay i traded the bounce on icon uh, and that was a very quick turnaround and for a very, very nice profit. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cover a Litecoin in that trade in a minute. But yeah, starting here with Bitcoin and saying what I believe is happening here. Obviously, I really liked the move down today to take out the liquidity. And I'll cover that in a second. But just showing you a really, really nice trend line here. And this is uh, obviously I've already got some nice trend lines here, but this is a trend line taken from the big green candle on the 8th of February, extending it to the big green candle here on the 5th of March. OK. And you see here, when you extend that on really nicely, then you actually can see that today we got held up by the exact line of this trend line. OK, so with that in mind, that's just really, really cool. Uh, really nice to see. Uh, and then you can see here today what happened here. So obviously on a smaller time frame, on this smaller time frame, we have been holding the lo a, a, a low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. OK, so when you see these series of higher lows like this, there lies a lot of liquidity to the to the downside, which you would like to take out that liquidity. OK, take out these lows, um, you know, for the added liquidity if we are to push on upwards. OK. So that's really nice that we obviously we found support on the, the trend line. But if you'd like to take a box of support, obviously we did end up bouncing around the trend line and this box of support. So then on a smaller term time frame, what I like to look at is the midpoint. So identifying here, I mean, it's really clear, clear as data where you can see this. So obviously we had the, you know, the start of the move up, which then come down in a bull flag for a move up again, uh, which obviously then, you know, didn't really turn into much. And we ended up moving up slowly with the higher with the higher lows each time. So still a profitable trade from the bull flag. But but what I'm identifying here is obviously the big, you know, red candle that we had on this move down, identifying that as then support, where we see support, 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 resistance, 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 support, support. OK, what was noticeable for me on this move is that when we bounced off of the trend line, we came right up to this area of resistance. OK, old support flipping into resistance. We came up to that, you know, to get rejected again. And now it will be the question of do we do we form a bull flag? I'm sorry, a bear flag. Are we going to form a bear flag here, you know, to get another move down? I would be looking at the 618, but this 618 is quite high, to be honest here. That would be going through the resistance. Obviously, we've just bounced here from the 382. You know, you all know that I love trading 382s, especially when it lines up like this. This is my favorite trade, uh, along with the 618. But you can see, obviously, we I mean, goes without saying, we're at the 618, we do have this area of resistance, again, that we're going to need to get through. Um, but, you know, my perfect scenario, honestly, <laughs> uh, would, would be if we actually got a move up again here to take out the highs okay to take well my, my number one <laughs> would be for the, the you know the most perfect sort of bull trap uh, let me just take off the auto scale and I'll show you what I would really love would be um, a, a really big bull trap of taking out all the highs <laughs> to then head all the way straight back down that would be like number one scenario but obviously um, this is what I mean earlier trade what the market is doing and not what you'd like it to do <laughs> so this is important as I'm going through this so although this would be my like preferred scenario don't get me wrong I'm not trading like this at the moment but trade what the market is doing not what you would like it to do please remember these words they are very important Remember that the name of the business is trading, not predicting. OK, at the end of the day, your trading results won't reflect your predictions, but rather your ability to adapt to the market and capitalize on price action. OK, that just means that you have to adapt when the market is going against you. You have to adapt. OK, do not be a permanent bull or do not be a permanent bear. You have to really be able to adapt as the prices are coming and, and you know, ad adapting to what's happening in the moment as a trader. And if you are unable to do that, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be a successful or profitable trader so you have to really lose all biases when you come when you actually come to the price action of trading okay price action doesn't care about what your bias is or what your prediction is you really if you want to make money you have to be able to get rid of that ego 
uh, and you know go with the market although that might be against your primary count okay and what's funny although I hardly follow any people obviously I follow about 45 people but some of these traders that I actually follow I, I counter trade or not counter -trade. I don't exactly just see what they're doing and do the opposite but I, I like to see what the most are doing and do the opposite there are a few traders that I like but um, yeah the majority are I, I counter trade but um well not directly counter trade but I like to see what's going on on those 45 uh, it's quite amusing but yeah, a lot of a lot of people. Obviously, I'm on crypto Twitter, and what I noticed is a lot of them, or not not directly these 45, but you know, in that in general, people have such an ego, and they really do not like admitting they're wrong. Um, so it's just highly, it's just hilarious that you know, uh, obviously, crypto Twitter, the space where traders never lose. <laughs> you never see somebody admitting they're wrong on crypto Twitter. Um, so it's quite funny. I, I, I also fall in that category. Um, so it's, it's just amusing that obviously on crypto Twitter, it's very taboo to talk about losses. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's one of the things that comes along with crypto Twitter, but, um, yeah, it's, it's important as, you know, obviously personally as a trader, it's important not to ever have an ego, um, and always be able to admit when you're wrong. Okay. And know when the trades are going against you, not that I've been wrong on these trades lately. Um, but yeah, that's just an important factor for you to like realize personally as a, you know if you want to succeed in trading you need to be able to um, trade what the market is doing and not what you'd like it to do okay so that's a takeaway from this lesson if uh, I hope that helps you um but yeah coming back to this uh getting a bit distracted there I, I can't even remember where I was going on with that anyway um yeah it was about my Cardano trade okay so I'll, I'll post about the Cardano I'll tell you about that Cardano trade as well um, so here we obviously are on the oh, let's look at the bigger time time frame I mean still on this bigger term time frame we obviously have I mean zooming out even more we have the low then the higher low higher low higher low higher low and now potentially now forming another higher low but we also do have still this okay I'm just going to remove this trend line here for now to make it you know clear things up and I'll remove the midpoint okay but we still do obviously have here on a on a on a larger term time frame the higher low trend lines that's still coming in here would be sat at around 3800 okay so we still do have this trend line as well so i mean as a swing trader um you know you're still looking for you know shorts at the resistances or longs at the support until they break okay until you get something like this and that's where you're going short OK, so, you know, swing trading these scenarios, I'm still, um, yeah, just so you all are aware. Actually, I'm going to save it to the end, uh, but I'm going to upload my um, Elliott Wave count tomorrow. because obviously, yeah, I'll save it to the end. Um, but yeah, the Elliott Wave count will probably be tomorrow. Um, but yeah, where am I going? <laughs> I, I need to concentrate on something and continue with this. Anyway, where are we going with this? Um, yeah, I was saying about this trend line. We obviously are still holding the higher lows here. Uh, you know, so there's nothing to worry about on the small term time frame. And this is why I took some of the trades that I did uh, on some of them. I did have positions already locked in and ready to trade it. This was Icon. Um, so I'll cover Icon now a second. I'll come back to Bitcoin in a minute. But this is just a trade. Um that you take every single time of the week. You have to remember that this is a like 15%, 13% drop, I believe. 13% from the high down here to the low. You know, 14% drop, okay? So this is an area that I had buys preset. Exactly on this blue line is where I had a buy absolutely placed. Okay, why? Let's zoom out here. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious that you see here on this blue line, resistance, 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 resistance. Okay, what's that resistance going to do? This resistance is going to flip into support. What did it do? It flipped into support and we got a very, very nice bounce. Okay. Very, very nice bounce. I sold a little bit too early, uh, but still uh, you cannot complain, you know, profits profit at the end of the day. Um, but you, you can see here that there's opportunities for playing longs, especially, especially for the end of the back of a 15% downwards movement. Okay, off the back of a 15% downwards movement. I have my buys already placed here because I wanted to get in on the old resistance flipping into support for a scalp on Icon, uh, which obviously turned out extremely nice. Um, and this is like a scenario where, you know, I... Don't care what bit happens to Bitcoin in this exact moment. Obviously, yes, I needed Bitcoin to dump and potentially help out Icon with the drop. Um, and that was obviously beneficial to me because it made the drop come quicker. But at the same time, I'm aware that Bitcoin's dropping. But, but I also am aware that Bitcoin has obviously found support on the on that trend line that I've deleted now. But on the exact trend line, we were coming down to the trend line. I was not basically it's, it comes to a, a situation where I'm not panicking about sculpting altcoins just because what's happening to Bitcoin. OK, I will take sculpts on altcoin on altcoins regardless of what is happening to Bitcoin in that exact moment. OK, 
so that's important to like realize how I'm trading these. I don't place too much emphasis on, you know, Bitcoin if I'm in the middle of an altcoin scalp. OK, and obviously, if you had been, then you would have missed out on these potential altcoin trades. Um, and you're obviously, you know, uh, on on uh, ontology gas, this is like a te over a 10 percent bounce. I think it was like 15 in the end. Um, yeah, about 12 percent bounce from its, you know, from its tweezed bottom here up to the top. We saw about a 12 percent bounce, which is a really, really big bounce ontology with similar bounces what i want to cover is cardano um and obviously this was a post that i made a few days ago or it might have been yesterday looking at the fifth wave up and and the fifth wave up is still valid by the way um or the third third to the fourth to the fifth is still absolutely valid but this was a position that I played, obviously, when we fell, come out of this falling wedge. OK, so we come down in this falling sort of wedge, A, B, C, D, E, then actually breaking up. OK, and I was obviously in a long position on Cardano, but it gets to a point where I, this is what I want to go over. Trade what the market is doing, what, what you'd like it to do. So on a bigger term time frame, I still have this coming upwards. But uh, my, my telltale sign that we were breaking down here is when we actually come up to this double top. OK, so we obviously come above this double top, come above the double top on the hour time frame, but with like really, really low volume. OK, so I wanted to actually see us break this double top um, or this just this, just the resistance line with high volume. You can see the volume is very low, to be honest. The volume was very low on the break. Um, so that was my first red sign that we were coming above here. And my get out sign was really when we broke down from this high. OK, we broke down from the high, remembering that we were on low volume. OK, we come down from that high. And at that point, I just put my stop loss in profits, uh, but put my stop loss, uh, you know, wanting to be out of the trade if we broke down from the lower highs. OK, so if we broke down from the higher lows, sorry. So if we obviously had lost this high low, I wanted to just be out of the Cardano trade, although I was still expecting it to come up. Uh, basically, yeah, I took my stop in profits uh, as this moved down. And this is just like a scenario of trade what the market is doing, not what you'd like it to do. Although I would have liked it to come back up. You know, it's it's just a scenario where you are adapting to what's happening on the market. The re red sign for me really was breaking the resistance on very low volume, no real follow through. Uh, there were potential follow through, but the volume for me was too low. Um, and that was just a sign of thinking, OK, if we are to come down here, I want to get stopped out in profits. And obviously, yeah, that's uh, then the move that then in the end got a continuation of down at about like 10 percent. And this isn't a trade that you want to be holding, although now we've got a bounce like you don't want to be holding a bag that's 10 percent underwater at all. OK, although I would have still been in profits because I entered on the break of the, you know, in you know, in the um, falling wedge, I could have held here and still been nice but it's better to get out in profits and then look for another trade let's see if we like come over and hold this as support and start moving up again because obviously here on cardano we now have to get through this again okay so there's areas of resistance obviously to to get through here um but yeah that's just a scenario where you have to adapt and trade the market as it's coming so that was obviously uh going through icon uh the sculpt or sort of sculpt but it was a, a, a buy that i already had placed but just showing you, you know, that there's opportunities just because something is going down, just because Bitcoin is going down. You don't have to only be shorting. You can be playing long. Uh, OK, so my positions obviously on altcoins were long positions, um, sculpting those alt long, alt altcoins in longs. Obviously, I'm still short on Bitcoin. So I am still shorting Bitcoin. Um, even though my preferred scenario is that we break some of these highs, I think it would be lovely to break some of these highs and get a sort of fake out uh, before we end up coming down. Um but yeah, that, that's still my preferred scenario that we could get some of this higher liquidity um, before we break down here. But yeah, just because, again, just because that's what I want to happen, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, but I am still shorting Bitcoin because I still believe we're, believe we're in wave two. Um, I am going to Barcelona the weekend, so I will be away. And that's why I'm going to be, I still, I will be bringing my laptop with me so I could potentially do some charts. I'm going to see how it goes. Obviously, I'm going to be really busy, but in, you know, potentially I could do a chart. Um unlikely but potentially <laughs> uh, so we'll see how it goes but i will um i've pre i've already recorded my uh, bitcoin uh, elliot wave count so i will release the elliot wave count tomorrow uh, it's all pre-recorded so i can just literally have to click upload so i will upload that for you all tomorrow so i hope that you enjoy that uh, currently as i'm speaking uh, it's in profits so it's very very nice let me just mute this a second <laughs> so it's yeah everything's going really well with that and i'll upload that for you all tomorrow so that's to look forward to 
uh, Bitcoin again. How can I end this video with a nice overview of here of Bitcoin? Okay, let's keep our eyes. Let's keep our eyes on this resistance right here. Okay, so how we're holding it. Resistance, support, obviously then the wicks above, wicks above, resistance, resistance. Let's keep our eye on this resistance at around three. Let's just say 3,900 is still support. Um, obviously, we have on a lower term time frame taken out the liquidity now. So that's a, a nice sign that we could potentially see a move up. Okay, so we have taken out the lower side liquidity. That's for me really nice. Um, but there is still a lot of liquidity to the downside below this, you know, what we're looking at potentially as an ascending triangle. To see if we obviously come up to the top on a bigger term time frame ascending triangle. There's a lot of liquidity still to the downside, but I believe the best or most pain <laughs> would come from a move up again to then fall back down. Okay. But obviously, you have to still be aware that we could form this bull flag, uh, sorry, bear flag, <laughs> bear flag that we could potentially just come up here again to just fall back down. Okay, so those are the scenarios that you need to be looking for. Um, I will be away. Um, you know, obviously, I'm going to get, get on the plane and things. So, yeah, I will struggle to update you. Um, but obviously, I'll try my best to update if there is a big move or a big trade to be entering. I'll do my best to update. Um, but I hope that this video has been beneficial for you all. And yeah, you can look forward to the Elliott Wave count tomorrow, which I'll upload um, it all in profit. So everything going really well. Uh, and remember the takeaway of today that trade as the market's coming. Uh, really, you just, you know, really have to try and remove biases in trading. And I, I know this guy said that unfortunately easier said than done. Um, and maybe it is, but that's where experience comes in. Obviously, I've been trading eight years, so I'm really used to it now. <laughs> but obviously, as an, as some people that are newer traders, um, yeah, it's not, it's not really, obviously, I understand it's not easy, but it all comes with experience and, you know, practice. Obviously, you know, it, it's easy for me to say because I've been doing it a long time, but I, 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 feel for the people that have obviously you know are still in this on maybe their first year still learning um and you know it just you know take it from me that it will come with time um you know it's it's so easy as a newer trader to get locked into a bias and you know i'm here to help uh and i am actually going to be making a whole whole course on risk management and the psychology of trading because for me psychology of trading is really really important thing to understand and master so that along with risk management um so i am working on that for you all so that would be nice um and yeah take away uh yeah please hopefully hopefully that helps you out um so yeah uh, <laughs> yeah i think that's about it i'm just wondering because obviously i'm not going to have the video for a few days however there's any more important news i do not believe so i don't want to take up any more of your time so hopefully you've enjoyed this video you understand the key areas to be watching over the weekend um I will try and update on Twitter, but if I don't, then hopefully if I, I've showed you here the three scenarios that obviously holding this midpoint, holding the ascending triangle. If we break down from the ascending triangle, you can, I'll tell you now, I'll be adding to short positions. Um, but yeah, that's obviously obviously going to come over the weekend more likely than not. Uh, OK, let's see if we get a flag breakdown or my preferred scenario that we actually can come up and take some of the liquidity out <laughs> and then head back down eventually. OK. So those are the scenarios that I'm looking for. I will update you um, as, as, as and when I can. OK, so I hope that you all too have a brilliant weekend and uh, yeah, enjoy yourselves. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, remember, the altcoins are still 100 percent with potential here. Uh, you know, today, just, you know, today alone in the last few hours, some of them have seen 10 percent bounces. So opportunity is still there with alts 100 percent. And uh, yeah, hope you hope you enjoy your time trading. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, please give me a like if you've enjoyed. Appreciate it. Thank you so much if you do. And, uh, you know, have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>